Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Kiana and I do a lot of sewing and fashion videos and today we are kicking off the holiday season with DIY gift ideas. I mean not only ideas but like tutorials as well. <laughs> I have five tutorials for you guys plus like one kind of bonus extra idea. But yeah, all of these things are super easy. I would say depending on the complexity of your designs, it can range from 15 minutes to on the higher end of things, one hour. So all of these are super doable. I think all of these are also super professional looking. I think people stray away from handmade gifts because you don't want them to look handmade. And I think all of these things look professional, store-bought and beautiful. And I would wanna get any of these things. So they are Kiana approved. Oh, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and TikTok so you don't miss other bomb Christmas DIYs such as this Christmas tree dress. And also these this Christmas PJ set for me and my dog. So make sure you are following me on TikTok. Anyways, let's just get into all the tutorials. So starting off with this checkered tote bag. First off, you're gonna wanna grab two different colors of the same fabric. I'm choosing to use a faux leather, but this would also look really good if you wanted to use a canvas, which is also much easier to work with. I'm first gonna cut out the straps, and the straps are gonna measure 27 inches long by four inches wide. And since this is a checkered design, I'm going to cut out one strap in each color. Next, I'm going to cut out the body of the bag, which is comprised of eight rectangles, four on each side. So each rectangle is going to be nine and three quarters inch long and seven and three quarters of an inch wide. And since this is a checkered design, you're gonna cut out four of each color. Now to sew the body of the bag. You're gonna have two of each color on each side. Make sure they're positioned like this to create that checkered design. And then place the rectangles right on top of each other, right side together, and sew along the long edge. If you're working with something like canvas, make sure you press your seams open. Now we're gonna take our two panels and place them right sides together and then sew along the center seam of the bag. When you're sewing the seam, make sure the vertical seam lines that you just sewed are lined up exactly, otherwise your checkered design will look a little bit odd. All of your seam allowances should be pressed open if you're working with canvas. If you're working with leather though, we're going to top stitch that down, which it's not completely necessary if you're using something like canvas, but I do think it adds a lot of design. We're gonna top stitch down both of those seam lines on either side, about an eighth of an inch away from the seam. And again, when you're doing this, make sure the seam allowances are pressed open. I also use a more heavy duty top stitching thread. Then just repeat this entire process for the other side of the bag. And when you have that, place both sides of the bag right side together and sew along both sides and the bottom. Now we're gonna make this bag have some boxed corners so it's not just like a flat magazine bag. To do this, grab one of the bottom corners of your bag and pull it open so that the seam lines are right in the center. Um, you wanna make sure those seam lines are lined up so that the box corners turn out evenly. So here you can see that I'm just pinning through that center seam, the seam lines, so that I can keep them in place. Then I'm gonna take my ruler and measure three inches across that corner. So there should be one and a half inches on the left and one and a half inches on the right of the seam line. Then I'm just going to stitch along that line. Now just flip your bag right side out and you should have this boxed corner on the bottom. Now to make the straps. So I'm just folding the straps into quarters. So basically folding the edges to the middle and then folding it in half once again, pressing it with my iron because I'm using faux leather. I'm putting muslin on top or press cloth so I don't burn the leather. And then I'm just going to top stitch that down on either side about an eighth of an inch away from the edges. I'm going to place the straps three and a half inches from the edge of the bag, um, from the edge of the bag to the edge of the strap. And then I'm just going to tack those down. If you're working with canvas, zigzag stitch or serge along the entire edge so that it doesn't fray later on. For leather, I'm just gonna tack it down because it's not gonna fray. Once you do that, you're gonna fold that top hem under two inches and then I'm going to sew around the bag to secure that hem. I'm gonna sew about a quarter inch from the top and then also about a quarter inch from the end of that hem. And then after you hem the top, your tote bag is done.
moving on to some leather earrings and I've made so many pairs of faux leather earrings throughout the years so I wanted to show you guys how I do that. You're going to need faux leather, earring backs, jump rings, needle nose pliers for the jump rings, double sided tape, and then finally either an awl to make holes for the jump rings or a seam ripper. I've also used tweezers, whatever you have on hand. Start off by cutting out four rectangles of one color. These are going to be the larger rectangle for this design. I kind of just ended up eyeballing it and holding it up to my face to see what size I wanted, but it was about one and three quarters of an inch by one and one eighth of an inch. I'm using some double sided tape to secure two rectangles wrong sides together, and I'm gonna do that for both sets of rectangles. Now I'm just gonna cut out two rectangles that are smaller than our original rectangles. Again, just kind of eyeballing it to see how much of the other rectangle I want shown around the border. So just kind of eyeballing it. And then I'm also gonna grab my double-sided tape and stick it down before I sew it on. You honestly do not have to sew it on at all because it's already stuck together, but I just liked that top stitching look. Now time to finish off your earrings. So I'm grabbing jump rings and some earring backs for the earring backs I'm using clip-ons. I'm gonna use an awl or a seam ripper to create two holes, one in each earring to place the jump rings through. And I'm actually gonna use two jump rings that are joined together so that the earring ends up like facing forward so it doesn't end up facing the side of your head or towards your neck. Um, so that's why I need two jump rings so that when it falls, it hangs nicely and faces forward. You can stop there, but I'm just gonna add three jump rings to the bottom of each earring just to add a little bit more detail. And then after that, you are done with your earrings and they match your bag perfectly. Next up are these personalized claw clips. I think this is a great, great gift for your girl squad. So first off, you can get claw clips on like Amazon for super cheap. You're gonna need either rhinestones or pearls. Make sure they have a flat back. I'm using gem tack to tack these on. You can also use E6000 and then definitely you need tweezers. As you can see here, I already planned out my design on paper with the pearls and took a picture in case it got messed up. This will definitely make your life a lot easier, so I recommend that. I'm grabbing a pearl with my tweezers, dipping it ever so slightly into the gem tack, and then just placing it on the claw clip. It doesn't cure right away, so you do have a good amount of time to keep moving the pearls around before it finally dries, and the glue will dry clear. So that's all I'm doing. I decided to do matching lowercase cursive initials for all of my girlfriends and yeah, that's what I gave to my friends for Christmas. Although I did step on mine already and break it, so don't do that. <laughs> Okay, now onto the rhinestone clip. The process of this is basically exactly the same as the claw clip. Definitely do it beforehand, like plan it out beforehand on paper. I did this crazy font, which I was so proud of because I actually executed it well, but this would be a great gift for a friend if you wanna spend a little bit more time because this did take longer, of course. It's more letters, it's a thicker font, but it's especially great, I think, if you have a friend with a more unique name and they can never find anything with their name on it. So like, I've never found anything with my name on it. So if I had gotten a personalized clip with my name, I would just, I would just die. But yeah, I love this. I'm going to be wearing it all the time. Next, for the sewer or crafter in your life, you can make them a pattern pack. So start off by buying them a pattern. If you buy them a digital pattern, I would definitely print it out for them. Like, so for example, this is one of my digital patterns. I printed out the instruction manual and I also printed out the actual pattern file just so they didn't have to do it. it just makes their life a little bit easier. If you get them a regular physical pattern, then you don't gotta worry about this step. But after you print out the pattern, go ahead and look at the supplies list on the pattern. Every pattern has this, and then just go ahead and get them all of those supplies so that they don't have to do that themselves. Most patterns require things other than just fabric, so make sure you're checking to get all of those notions so that they don't have to source any of those things themselves. Then just package it all nicely, put it in a bag, or tie it all up with a bow. And then a little bonus idea, if you are the sewer and your friends are not, then go ahead and just make something for them. I'm sure you guys have extra fabric lying around or you have patterns that you've used in the past. Just go ahead and make some custom clothing. It could be an easy piece of clothing and that is just the ultimate gift. 
So those are all my DIY gift tutorials for this holiday season. If you have any other DIY gift ideas, leave them down below so that we can all help each other out. If you liked this video or found it helpful in any way, feel free to give me a thumbs up because it is the easiest way to support your favorite creators for free. Also feel free to follow me on Instagram and TikTok so you don't miss out on other DIYs. My handle is Kiana Bonolo. But yeah, make sure you are subscribed and have that notification bell turned on. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.